Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening. We're incredibly excited about tonight's webinar. Uh, obviously, here with uh, myself, Camel Mockin from the AgriRep team, and uh, my colleague, Hugh Henry, also a tenant farm in, in Mid Wales, along with George Dunn uh, of the TFA. So really, really excited to, to be with you this evening. Uh, we'll give everybody just a few minutes to to get cracking. We have um, we have had about 130 registrants for tonight, so so amazing to to have all of you with us this evening. Uh, we're really excited to to be with you and and talking about uh, technology and agriculture. And and I think we're going to get a couple different perspectives. Uh, obviously, a, a quick look at at the AgriWeb uh, platform and and how we're currently helping our customers but as well hearing from uh, Hugh and, and his farm and an insight into, into how he's using technology uh, to, to push the farm forward and, and how that's changed over the years. So again, we'll give everybody just a, a minute or two. We will try and stay to about an hour. Um, so we'll, we'll try and get through everything on, on time, but we have budgeted for a little bit longer than that for questions and, and things of that nature. So. As again, as we approach the, the seven o'clock hour, just make sure that if you do have questions, we do want this to be an interactive session. It'd be great to, to hear where you're from, uh, why you've decided to join us today. So you'll notice uh, down the bottom of your Zoom controls, you should see both a Q&A section as well as a chat function. So the chat you can actually send to all members that are, are joining us here on the webinar. Q&A will come into uh, the three of us. And, and as I said, we will try and get to all of your questions in, uh, in due course. So feel free again, please do put your, your questions in the Q&A section and any chat, please let us know where you're joining us from, what piqued your interest, uh, and obviously let us know if you're, a, if you're a, an existing TFA member looking to learn a little bit more. And, uh, and again, we've got about 130 people registered for the event this evening, which is really, really exciting to see the interest in, in kind of the, the future of, of technology on farm. Um, so we will probably keep everybody on mute. Uh, so if you do, again, if you do have questions, put them in the Q&A section down the bottom of your, of your Zoom or your, your webinar controls, and we'll try and get to those uh, just as soon as we can. So again, we'll, we'll give everybody probably about, about another minute and then we'll, uh, we'll get going. Thrilled to have you guys all with us. Excited to, to be you know, here delivering this webinar and, and obviously partnering with, uh, with the TFA. Really excited to, to be, be a, a corporate partner. Um, so again, for those of you just joining us, we will have quite a few people on the webinar, so we will keep everybody on mute, but you can put in your questions into the Q&A down the bottom of your Zoom or, or your webinar controls. Or again, if you do have um, any other comments, queries, questions for any of the three of us, please don't, uh, don't feel uh, that you can't voice those. You can put them in the chat and obviously in the chat, let us know where you're joining us from, uh, why you've decided to join us. And uh, again, we want this to be an interactive session, certainly not just uh, us talking at you for, for the next hour. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get going here. We'll try and keep to, as I said, about, about an hour. But again, really, really excited to, to be joining you here tonight, obviously with uh, myself, Campbell, from the AgriRev team, partnering with the TFA and, uh, and delivering you this webinar on, uh, on delivering the, the kind of digital future of agriculture, as well as, as getting started with, with technology on farm. So in, in just a second, I'll, uh, well, I won't, but I'll let my, my uh, co-hosts introduce themselves one by one. Uh, we'll then hear from George about the TFA, the different programs and things of that nature that they've got going on. Uh, just an overview of, of a, their spectacular organization. So again, thank you to them for, for allowing us to, to put this on and, and joining us uh, on, the, on the webinar. We'll then hear from Hugh Davies. He's a tenant farmer in Mid Wales. Uh, Hugh is a pretty forward, progressive farmer, I like to think, uh, so much so that he signed on to be an AgriRev customer and he's since joined us on the AgriRev team. So we're thrilled to have him here today to tell you a little bit about his farm, how he's using technology across his farm. 
and then ultimately we'll we'll get going on to a few different tips and and kind of tricks to to get getting started with tech and then finally a, a quick overview of of agareb and and how we can hopefully help with uh with that process um so without any further ado we'll get to a couple introductions here i'll, I'll start with uh with george george welcome uh we're thrilled to, to be on here with you and yeah take it away i think you might just be on mute but i'll unmute you there well i was on mute there we are there so I can you now? sorry yeah. yeah my name is yeah. and uh, i'm Chief Executive of the Tenant Farmers Association of England and Wales. Uh, more about that, I will tell you in a moment. Fantastic. Thanks so much, George. Looking forward to it. Q, care to give us a quick introduction? No, not so it's about. Good evening, everybody. Uh, pleased to be on here tonight, uh, joining Campbell and George. Uh, I'm a third generation tenant on the Dollar Costly estate. Uh, I'm looking forward really to share with you a little bit of background to the estate, the farm and sort of move into how we're using uh, technology, especially AgriWeb, uh, uh, to make the farm sort of sustainable going forward into the future. Fantastic, thank you. And my name is Campbell Mockin. I am the UK country manager for AgriWeb. I uh, spent, uh, well, I guess the last year here in the UK and, and four years before that uh, working with AgriWeb in Australia. Uh, so needless to say, thrilled to be back in the in the northern hemisphere. Um, so excited to be here talking to you about how technology is is kind of helping farmers push their farms forward, and why really now is is the best time to to get started. Um, so again, thrilled to to be joining you here today, and uh, and look forward to to chatting in in just a few minutes. Um, Again, just before we kick off, for those of quite a few of you who just joined us in the last minute or so, please get your questions into the Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Put them in the chat. Let us know where you're, you're joining us from. And, uh, and as I said, excited to, to be with all of you uh, here. And we'll, we'll certainly try and get to any and all of the questions as we go. So to kick us off, I think we'll, we're excited to have George here. And, and George, take it away. We'd love to know more about the, the TFA. Thank you, uh, Campbell. So I'm delighted that the TFA is able to work with uh, AgriWeb in putting together this, uh, this webinar. Uh, for those of you who don't know anything about the Tenant Farmers Association, we're an England and Wales organization. We have a sister organization in Scotland, and we exist to represent the interests of those individuals who don't own the land that they use for farming purposes. So mostly that's agricultural tenancies but it would also include grazing licenses, uh, share partnerships, uh, common land, and other types of, of, of occupation um, agreement. And the TFA exists really to do three things. It's there to provide advice to our members on agricultural tenancy and related matters. And so today, you might be interested to, to know that I have specifically been giving advice to members in relation to things like capital gains tax, environmental impact assessment regulations, and uh, notices to quit today have been issues that I've been advising members on. The second thing that we do is to provide information, and today is the day that we issue our weekly e-newsletter, and there was information in that today about changes to the government requirements on MOTs, there was information about the government's consultation on environmental land management schemes and the government consultation on uh, dairy contracts. So information is something which we are in the marketplace for and uh, lobbying support of our members. And today I've been briefing peers on the agriculture bill and the amendments which we've been promoting to that in committee stage, which the peers will be beginning to look at next week. So we are here to advise, to inform and to support our members. And I'm delighted that we are working with AgriWeb, not just on this seminar, but in this webinar, but on providing tech solutions for our members that will see increases in productivity for our members. And I'm always pleased when members of our association recommend other organizations with whom we can work to, uh, to the greater good. Uh, and it was a particular interest uh, that AgriWeb was highlighted to me by Hugh Davis, and you'll hear from Hugh a bit later on. He's a man who doesn't suffer fools gladly. So when he said I needed to speak to AgriWeb, 
I knew immediately that I had to jump to it. And from my very first engagement with uh, AgroWare, with Campbell and his colleague Annabelle, I certainly wasn't disappointed. I found their enthusiasm and their passion and their former focused attitude. Uh, and most importantly, they de the, their shared desire to deliver value to our members uh, was, was fantastic. Um, and I was taken on a tour of their platform and I was blown away by its coverage, its detail and its capacity and yet the simplicity of its user experience and hopefully you'll, you'll gain a bit of that uh, later on tonight when we see a bit of a demo on that. And they also seemed to be able to anticipate the questions that I wanted to ask in a sort of Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier response which was, which was great. And, and I'm sure that you will be really impressed with what you see and, and hear tonight. So on that note, I will say sit back and enjoy the webinar and I'll hand back to Campbell to take you through the rest of the evening. Fantastic, thank you very much, George. That's uh, kind words and, and hopefully you and I can, can live up to that. I, I think I'd, I'd echo that. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're the new kids on the block a little bit here in, in the UK and, and hopefully you know, being able to, to bring a different approach to, to farm software and farm tools and, you know, we're, we're thrilled to be able to partner with with groups like the TFA and, and I'll echo that as, as soon as we sat down with George's, I think his first question to us was, you know, what's what's the real goal of, of Agrib? And, and, you know, he kind of went on to say that, you know, that was their goal as well as delivering value to, to their members, to farmers, to, to the industry. So, again, really excited to, to be to be partnering with with the TFA. And as I said, hopefully we can uh, we can live up to it over over the next 40 to, to 50 minutes. Um, again, get your questions in uh, just in the Q&A section across the, the bottom. We'll certainly get to those uh, near the end of the webinar. Um, but on that note, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, both a TFA member, an Agrib user, and a colleague. Uh, Hugh has, uh, well, I won't steal his thunder. That's exactly what I'll do. I will turn it over to Hugh. We're really excited to have Hugh joining us to get an insight into his farm, where technology is playing a role, and kind of where he sees that that going in the in the future so again Q thank you welcome and take it away thank you Campbell and uh, thank you George as well for for your kind words uh, George does an amazing job for tenants uh, in, in England and Wales especially and is very well connected and hugely respected within government so thank you for the work you're, you're doing George and really glad that you're associated with AgDweb going forward um, yeah, we'll see how much of, of, a, of a team we are, Campbell, because you're actually going to be controlling my slide deck tonight because my internet can play up a little bit. And also you've taken the liberty of moving some slides around. So uh, I hope I can catch up with what you've done and uh, this will be seamless. So this will be a really good test of partnership working going forward. Okay, Mr. Campbell? Yeah, there you go. Well, we like to keep you on your toes. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the first slide. Okay, so just a couple asked me to give a little bit of background to the farm, uh, Sandra, uh, the estate we're on really, and move through to where we are in the current day and how we're using tech to, to make our farm more efficient and then link into him doing what will be hopefully quite, quite a, an excellent demo. So Sandra is based on the Dolicossi estate. Um, uh, Dolicossi estate, like many estates, uh, were handed over to the National Trust in the uh, 40s and 50s, a lot due to maybe to death duties, or it could be there was a family rift within, within the family that owned the estate, and uh, they were left as a legacy then to, 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 to the National Trust, which is one of the biggest landowners, as you know, in the UK. Uh, there are eight farms on the estate, uh, all uh, fairly similar in size and also fairly like-minded uh, farmers as well. Um, I'm a third generation, uh, as, as many of the others are. We've had a couple of new tenants in the last couple of years, which has been really exciting, uh, and has maybe given us fresh impetus on the estate as to, as to how we farm. Um, it's, it's an upland estate. Uh, we go from about 500 feet up to 1,000 feet uh, across, across the 2,500 acres. And except for one farm, they're all beef and sheep. Uh, but Nigel Williams, uh, he still milks down in the Dolacossi, uh, down in the lowlands of the estate, as we call. And um, uh, we'll see where, where that goes with the next generation. 
Um, as I said, I'm a third generation, but we, Sheila and I, we, we've got three daughters. So maybe uh, our connection with the farm will come to an end in, in the next few years. Not too soon, I hope, but uh, that's something we'll have to look at probably in the next uh, sort of five to six years. Okay, Campbell, if you go to the next slide. So again, using AgriWeb, this is where AgriWeb is great. We've been able to map out the farm. Uh, I wish the farm was as flat as what it looks here. Uh, we, we got sort of uh, three peaks on the farm or three hills. Uh, if you looked at this, uh, you'd think it was uh, as flat as East Anglia. It's not. Um, but what AgriWeb has done is given us the ability to map out the different fields, uh, to color code which ones we use for grazing, which ones we do for silage, or if we uh, actually plow, we tend to plow on the farm about 10 acres every year. Uh, and again, that's given us the great ability to have a visual sort of outlook on, on what happens. Uh, we extend to about 280 acres, um, 60 acres of that is woodland, uh, while the rest is, is permanent pasture, uh, with, as I said, uh, regular reseeding. Uh, we were in an environmental scheme for about 10 years, but have now come out, and um, that's got its pluses and minuses. It does give us a bit more freedom to maybe uh, farm as we want to, but of course we miss the, the government payment, payment that comes with the environmental schemes. Uh, we're very lucky to be on an old tight tenancy with the National Trust, so we have got quite a lot of freedom uh, to farm in the way that we want to. Okay, uh, Campbell. This is where it gets exciting because some of the slides have changed. But anyway, we are a family farm. Uh, as I said, I farm in partnership with my wife, uh, Sheila. Uh, we have got uh, three daughters who have now left uh, home and, and are in, in working in their own rights in, in various professions. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the backbone of this estate are the families. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, we, most of the labour on the farms is family labour. The, there is a good use of contractors, but uh, it's a very close community. And at times as we are at the moment, you know, COVID does a huge effect on, on people, on communities. Uh, on, on families, uh, that sort of community spirit has come into fore, and we do feel very fortunate living where we do, that we can still carry on our profession, still be out in the fresh air, and we feel truly blessed that, that we are able to do that. Uh, my, my middle daughter will be very annoyed with this picture because it shows her helping us out at cheering time, and I think the sheep are supposed to go in the opposite direction to which they are, but anyway, she, 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 she did try, and I think she did manage to get them back in. Okay, Campbell. Uh, we've got, uh, again, a lot of uh, quite decent low ground. Uh, this is a, a new picture, which I didn't realize you put in Campbell, so I'll have to talk to it uh, at random. Uh, we've got about uh, three uh, large fields on, on the river. We call them in Welsh, adolis. Um, and this is where we wean the lambs uh, in the summer. Um, we cut silage, well, we have just cut silage about uh, a week ago. We were fortunate to get uh, the weather. It's been a bit difficult this week, but we, we cut about uh, 50 acres and we've actually put muck on them this week and we will wean the lambs onto these uh, low-lying fields, uh, hopefully in about two weeks' time, and also take the first draw of lambs probably, which we will sell dead weight into Dumbia. Uh, we've got a local abattoir which is only 12 miles away, which is, which is great, and uh, hopefully that first draw will, will happen in, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Okay, Campbell? Okay. Uh, yeah, these are a uh, picture of lambs. Uh, one is from last year, the one on the left. Um, this was the day after we'd uh, weaned. Uh, we, we weaned the, the ram lambs and the ewe lambs uh, separately. We keep uh, an Aberfield uh, ewe, uh, which we cross back to the Aberfield, uh, and we sell the ram lambs, obviously on a dead weight basis, uh, hoping to average about 18 and a half to 19 kilos. Um, and then the ewe lambs, we, we retain uh, about 160 every year into a flock of 500. And uh, then we sell the surplus uh, couple of hundred, two to two, 250 to um, uh, private to customers. Uh, the picture on the right in the race there, we were quite pleased this year. That was the um, singles 
uh, which uh, we bought them in at the end of May, early June, to put click on them. And uh, we, we're very lucky that we've got pretty decent uh, handling uh, pens, and I think there's about 100 in that race. And the lambs have done really well uh, this year. It's been uh, a very good spring. Uh, it was dry for a period, and we were struggling um, a few weeks ago, but the rain just came in time. Uh, but those lambs will be, as I said, weaned now in a couple of weeks' time, and we should be selling probably around 60 to 70 percent of those single ram lambs uh, straight off their mothers, or that will be the plan anyway. Okay, Campbell. So this is looking back uh, at things, how things have changed really over the last 40 years. Uh, this is Chandra going back to the uh, sort of early 70s. Um, I was born in 63, so I would have been about 10 years old when this picture was taken very traditional farm. Uh, we were milking then, as most people in the valley were. We had uh, cows tied, tied in byers. Uh, you had sort of a muck heap on the yard, which you you sort of, you, you, you cleaned out under the cattle using a spade and, and a wheelbarrow. Uh, you had your traditional hay shed, and you usually did about maybe 25 acres of hay, uh, which you would store in there. And uh, just above the house there, you would have the traditional garden where I think this is where you've done a bit of clever manipulation, Campbell, if we move on to the next slide, where this is a farm as it is now. And as you can see, over the, the, the last 40 years, there's been a huge development uh, on, on Sandre and also on the other uh, tenanted farms on the estate as well. Uh, and that's been a good mixture of investment from us as tenants, but also from the National Trust as well. Uh, during the sort of late 90s, early 2000s, they were very keen to invest in their farms and uh, we, we moved the farms forward in, 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 in a good direction and also using the, the government grants that were around then. So, you know, we built a lot of buildings on the right hand side in terms of sheep housing, uh, a modern silage pit. And on the, the, the bottom of the photograph, we've also got a, a covered a slurry pit, which we put in uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, the farm runs to about 80 inches of rainfall every year. And I very quickly realized that why would I want to carry out 80 inches of rain? And hence why we put the, the, the roof over the, over the slurry pit. So big changes in terms of buildings and the functionality of how we manage our stock and also how that made it much easier for us uh, as a husband and wife team uh, to, to actually uh, make the farm successful. Okay, Campbell. Uh, also, as far as harvesting is concerned, um, I got hold of this picture of my father. Uh, he had natural air conditioning then. We, we said to go on about air conditioning in, in our tractors. Uh, he's driving the Fordson Major here with a New Holland baler behind. Um, harvesting used to take about three weeks around then, probably only to do 25 or 30 acres. And we always look back, don't we, with nostalgia that the weather was much better then. I'm not sure if it was. But uh, if you go on to the next picture, uh, Campbell, we now tend to do about, well, I've seen us to do 70 to 80 acres and, and, and do that in six or seven hours. How things have changed. Uh, we're very lucky in the area to have a good contractor in an Aileen Jones. And as I said, he was in last week with us and uh, we cut, cut on the Monday, which took about four or five hours. And the next day we started at 10 o'clock and we were done by tea time and the pit was covered uh, by about eight o'clock that night. So again, progress and big changes uh, from where we were in the past. Okay. And probably the, the, the picture on the left here shows the biggest change on farm and, and, and what has made the our life so much easier is the quad bike. Uh, when, when I came home from, from school, we used to have, uh, or even when I was in school, we used to go shepherding on horses. Uh, that changed gradually to, if you all remember, the trikes that came along, Honda three-wheel bikes. And then, of course, we all got these quad bikes. And looking at that picture, those are the things that make our life so much easier here. The, we got the bobcat, we got the silage feeder, and the quad bike. And that enables us to carry out uh, the, food, the feeding we need to do with what is now the house sheep, which you can see there on the right, in a very, very short time. And like a lot of farmers, and maybe especially tenants, I developed a business off the farm as well to supplement the, the family income. And without those developments, that would not be possible. So technology, 
and the sort of development of machinery has made you know our life sort of much much easier in terms of the physical work we do on the farm and freed us up to do a lot of other stuff as well okay Campbell. but probably the the one of the biggest changes we've seen is the amount of, of records we have to keep um going back uh, around 91 92 i've been a big advocate of farm assurance since this beginning and I'm quite proud in that I was the sixth member of uh, Welsh Lamb and Beef Farm Assurance Scheme, uh, which has now got around 7,000 members. So when I, some people ask me, what was your membership number? I say, foul six. I hope it shows the commitment I had to, to that scheme. Um, you know, farm assurance and record keeping uh, is something that underpins the, the product that we sell, whether it's beef or lamb into the domestic market or into the... Um, uh, export trade and of course what also has been uh, hugely pressing us over the last few years has been cross compliance uh, we're all pretty happy with the single farm payment that comes through in early December but to support that uh, we have that requirement to keep farm records and over the years I've been trying to find easier ways of doing that and moving from what uh, as Campbell might tell you uh, in a few minutes what is the most popular farm management tool in the world which is a diary and pieces of paper into a sort of a software based system and I was so excited a couple of years ago when I came across AgriWeb and when they moved across to this country uh, the sort of flexibility the ease of use that AgriWeb brought and to be able to use it on 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 a smartphone and that has enabled me to um, spend even less time record keeping uh, uh, and, and sort of adhere to the, the needs of farm assurance and cross compliance. But what it's done as well is given me, which is probably as important or more important, are the insights that I need to actually ma manage my farm more effectively from uh, showing me daily labor gains on my lambs uh, to um, managing my fields in terms of uh, grassland and um, yeah, again, we need every edge we can uh, in our farming businesses to make them successful, uh, to be able to sustain our families in these beautiful valleys. Uh, and also in the case, if you're a tenant, uh, to pay that rent, which we have to pay every year. So with that, Campbell, uh, I'll hand back to you. I'm happy to take a few questions. or so if you want to ask me as to what further use I make of AgriWeb, uh, I'd be happy to respond. No, no, thank you, Hugh. I think uh, it's it's really interesting to see, and and I, you know, we always, I always, you know, enjoy hearing you talk about that that kind of progression of you know different things that 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 you maybe used to be best practice on farm, and and how far some of those practices have come. And I think, you know, the the co-founder of Agra uh, came from a, a four hundred thousand hectare pastoral station up in uh, northern South Australia and he tells this very similar story where you know it was it was horse and buggy and they actually had families that would live all around the, the station mm -hmm. to a point where they had the trikes to the point where they had the quad bikes and now his, his father still musters with uh, with a Cessna uh, Cessna airplane um, and so I think on on that note you know, I think the, the takeaway for me is that, you know, farmers have always been forward thinking, innovative. How can I make, you know, my life a little bit easier? How can, how can I really take, take that next step in, in farming? And I think from looking at that, and you may have already um, answered this question, but do you think that that quad bike is one of those things that you'd look back and go, that really revolutionized the way that, that we kind of run our farm day to day? Oh, absolutely. It um, it makes, you know, let's take an example of, of carrying ewes and lambs out from the shed uh, after lambing. Uh, we used to have to herd them out or, you know, carry a lamb and he would follow you, whereas now you just load them onto the uh, trailer behind the quad bike and off you go. I suppose the only detrimental things that the quad bikes have done, they've made us farmers probably unfitter. Uh, you know, a farmers may be uh, going to the gym where, where, because, you know, instead of natural fitness and, and you have to be careful also with farm dogs. Uh, we tend to manage our dogs off the bikes now or to have them follow us and um, where, you know, we maybe are losing a little bit of that skill with handling dogs. But quad bikes, yeah, we, we, we run two uh, 500cc Hondas on the farm. Um, 
I, I was very lucky. My, my wife wanted a, a, a Christmas present a couple of years ago, and her, and her ask was, could you get a, a quad bike with power steering and heated handlebars? And I thought, I've married well here. <laughs> there you go. Um, we've had a, a question come in from Hugh for Hugh, um, and it's, how much time a week do you spend inputting information into the, into the smartphone, into, into Agrib? Uh, well, it, because it's so easy, it's difficult to answer because you're doing it as you're going along. Um, and I think that's the beauty of Agrib and the smartphone. It's in your hand all the time. So if I'm buying, for example, uh, drugs from a, from a local supplier, um, as soon as they turn up in the yard or I pick them up, I will put it in immediately. I'll give you another example. We were shearing uh, a couple of weeks ago and while the boys were actually putting the trailer uh, or, or putting it back together to, to, to drive away, I put in uh, the number of sheep that have been shorn, the cost of shearing, uh, because obviously uh, you can put in the, the, the cost into AgriWeb and follow your cost of production. I put in what the wool roller cost me. Uh, I put in, uh, we, we feed our, our shearers, obviously, as everybody does traditionally around here. I put in a, a nominal fee for the amount of food, whatever. So it had, by the time they put the trailer back, I done all that record keeping. Yeah. And, and as it, maybe you'll explain later, when I put them back into the field, I'd created a record because I'd estimated what the, what the grass site was in that field, what the food offer was. So everything was done very, very quickly. So, mm. so to give you an estimation of time a week would be very difficult because it's just happened so naturally now. Mm. Whereas when I used to have um, a farm assurance visit, you know, you'd be spending two or three days scrabbling around trying to find something. And, and, and the information was often meaningless because you were having to often make up some of the data. Uh, yeah. I shouldn't admit to that, should I? But, uh, but it happened. So yeah. it's just the ease of putting it in. Yeah, don't 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 give away any of your uh, of your trade secrets there, Hugh. We'll, oh, well. Uh, we'll keep that under the under the uh, the hush hush. Um, we've got a couple other questions coming in, but but they are pertaining directly to the Agrib app. So I might just I might hold those, Michael. I, I do see your question, yeah. so I'll definitely get to that. Um, spoiler: It does connect with with EID and and hardware, but but we'll get to to that in in just a second. Before we get to a, a full demo, I just thought, you know, being so close to ag tech, we, you know, we hear a lot, you know, whether it's right for my farm or, or what should I get started with or what's the easiest way to get started. And so what I thought I'd just quickly do is, is touch on a few things that, because I, I do genuinely believe that now really is the best time for, for any farmer, let alone uh, kind of beef and sheep farmers, which, which as we, we probably should have explained, Agrib is focused on those those kind of mixed operations, you know, as Hugh says, he's got some cropping, he's got some pasture improvement, beef and sheep, and, and we're trying to encompass all of that into the one system. But ultimately for, for any farmer, I think that there's, there's a number of reasons why really now is genuinely the best time to, to find a piece of technology, see what might work and, and see what results you, you might be able to, to get from, from that piece of technology on, on your farm. And so ultimately, even though this is a, an Australian statistic, and uh, don't uh, don't take uh, hold my uh, feet to the the fire too much on on those dollar signs, but I think the real there's a couple of reasons why technology has has started to get far better and more accessible is because it works. And this was a study done by by as it says Meat and Livestock Australia that that showed by just by taking better records, just using a digital record keeping tool you could actually improve your gross margin per hectare by $118. So the Aussie dollar is not very strong, but still, and especially if it's, a, if it's an Aussie hectare, uh, you'd imagine uh, the results would probably be even higher uh, here in the UK. So there, there is that, there's that ability to pull more out of your business simply by actually measuring uh, what you're doing on farm. And, and Hugh says it best, you know, you can't, you can't manage what you, what you can't measure. And I think, especially here in the UK, there's the changing demands, whether they're from consumers, whether they're from, you know, your processors or thing, uh, government organizations like BCMS, retailers, everybody wants a little bit more uh, from the producer. And, and unfortunately, I'm not sure we're going to be trending in the other direction anytime soon. And so really, there is that ability or there is that, that kind of opportunity 
to improve the way that, that the farm is run and, and hopefully have technology play a role in that because of those changing demands and those demands that are just continually put on top of, of you, the farmers. And I think that, you know, again, hopefully we on the, on the technology side are starting to step up to provide you with tools that make, you know, life doing this amount of record keeping a little bit easier. And I think when we really looked at it and think about it, you know, especially coming from Australia, and I will deny this if anybody uh, says it, but the amount of record keeping that's done here in the UK is is night and day uh, more advanced and, and, and more stringent. I think when we started to look at it, we looked at, you know, the herd book, the flock book, pasture and slurry records, as, as Hugh talked about, the vet and med usage, BCMS, EID Cymru, all of those things that need to be satisfied are really just solve the cross compliance on the farm. And so again, I think the trend is gonna continue up that curve for more stringent cross compliance audits, things of that nature. And so how can we, from a technology side of things, provide you with tools that are really going to benefit you and, and your farm? And I think that while saying that, and, and there are those things that are common across farms, what we certainly know, and, and I'm sure you know, no one's got a, the same uh, farm setup or, or is running the same amount of animals. You know, more questions coming in uh, for Hugh about his his operation, but everybody's got a unique farm, and and it comes with common challenges. But you may need those unique solutions, and so really, when you think about technology, I think it's really interesting and and it's really easy, and I see it all the time where you start to talk about technology. And, you know, people's eyes glaze over or they assume you're talking about something complicated like a drone or satellite uh, imagery or, you know, the, the, the amount of, of technology that comes in, in your everyday tractor this, these days. And I don't think that that has to be the case. And I think what you can do and, and my advice from, you know, five years working with, with um, lamb and, and beef farmers implementing technology would be to, to simply start with that challenge that you're facing on farm. You know, start with not don't worry about Hugh's farm and, and how he's pushed it forward and how he's making those improvements. He'd be happy to tell you and, and we'll get him back on to do just that. But start with that that challenge that's facing you on, on your farm today, because if you can start with that challenge, what you can then do is start to identify, am I using the best tool for the job? And I think the exciting thing is that, as I mentioned, now is probably the best time to look at a new tool, look at a new piece of technology that may be able to solve that particular challenge that you're facing on your farm. And this is not uh, a picture of, of the AgriWeb platform, but I think it highlights the difference in how far we've come as a, as a technology industry and, and as an ag tech industry over the last five years. When I started with AgriWeb, there was something like $20 million worldwide of, of investment into agricultural technology. I believe last year that was north of a million and a half pounds. Uh, so that, that, that sheer money, sorry, a billion and a half pounds, uh, the sheer money and, and you know, with that people that are dedicating their lives and their livelihood to, to producing these tools is hopefully what then brings us to, to being able to develop you know, these, these simple or, or hopefully simple to use solutions that are solving those, those kind of complex uh, farm challenges that, that, that you've identified on farm. And again, hopefully what that means is we're getting results like this. And this is actually from, from somebody just down the road from, from Hugh in, in the Valley, uh, James Smith, who's also a, a TFA member, a Welsh tenant farmer. And, uh, and this is, you know, a couple months into to James using Agarab. And he said, before Agarab, I would have winged it, overspent, overstocked, had drugs and medications sitting around that I didn't need. I've probably saved two to 300 pounds already. That's in the first three or four months of, of him actually using the Agro product. And hopefully, again, it, it highlights that issue. You know, you all on the, on the call might be sitting there and saying, well, I don't have an issue with my, my inventory. That's more than fine. Start with that thing or that challenge or that problem that you're facing on farm and look for the best solution uh, to that. So with that, uh, there was a, a question that, that had come in, um, so we'll, we'll certainly get to that. Matt, I can see your questions there, so I'll, I'll certainly get to those. Michael, I've got one as well. Perfect. There was another question there there for Hugh, but it, it seems to have uh, eluded me there. 
but um, we can we can certainly. I'll, Hugh's answered it live. Hugh, do you want to maybe? Um, do we want to answer that live quickly, or maybe we'll save it for the end? Yeah, just very quickly. We we lamb up to about five hundred views in the shed. Um, in terms of uh, disease, I think the, the, the main problem that does arise sometimes is lameness. And like everything, it's just keeping on top of it. Um, last couple of years have been pretty good. We were part of the group of farmers that developed the five point plan with FAI Farms and Farms Weekly. And we went in very hard a few years ago with um, using foot vax, culling, um, sort of treating as quickly as possible. But I would say lameness is one you've got to keep an eye on. Uh, and then in terms of lamb disease, I think the trick there is to ensure that your diet is correct with the pregnant ewes to make sure that you've got good colostrum. Uh, so we, we, we don't experience things like watery mouth. Uh, joint tail, uh, we had a very bad uh, incident about eight, nine years ago, never got to the bottom of it and it never came back again, uh, cross fingers. Um, and in terms of easy cares, I think that was the other part of the question. Question. We do use innovative genetics now when we have found that difficult births is something in the past. Uh, I think we pulled about seven lambs out of about seven to eight hundred last year, which was great. So I hope that answers the question. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. So again, I wanted to, to run through. I, I will um, turn my camera off for now so you don't have to look at the top of my head as I look down at my, my iPad here. Um, but I wanted to, to give an overall kind of just a quick run through of the Agareb uh, software platform. So ultimately, as I, as I said, we're looking to, to help really simplify, you know, the, some of those common problems that, you know, you know beef and lamb farmers are, are coming up against every day, whether that's simplifying your record keeping, whether that's having information and insights into your farm so that you can push the farm forward and, and as you know George alluded to off the top, improve the efficiency, improve the pop profitability of, of your farm. Or whether that's you know as simple as as uh, giving you back a little bit of time. You know, as as you said, and as I've spoken to to many farmers, James included, James got a job off farm. He doesn't want to be sitting spending his entire day uh, going through his record keeping. He wants to get it in, get it done quickly, and not have to worry about his, his cross compliance or his record keeping. So when it comes to the Agareb app and the, the platform as a whole, we've tried to think about it as a kind of one-stop shop tool. So if you're running uh, cattle, sheep, if you're doing uh, pasture improvements, uh, cropping rotations, things of that nature, really all encompassing so that you can get all of your farm records into one spot and really understand a whole farm view. Get those whole farm insights. Now what we've run into in the past is you know you've got one app for the for the cropping aspect, you've got uh, one app, one app for you know sheep production, one for cattle, things of that nature and, and it's difficult to get that full picture of your business. So again, we've tried to bring everything into one spot, as you can see, and again, tried to make it very simple, as you alluded to, very visual, easy to use, based around your farm map. And ultimately, what we've done here, and, and a question has just come in about what happens if you lose your phone. So it's, it's a good question, and what I'm using right now is, is an iPad. You can use your iPhone, your Android device, tablet, whatever you might want to use. The app will is one kind of portion of, of the platform. It will work completely offline. So you do all your day-to-day -day record keeping here on the app. And then when you do hit an internet connection, it's actually going to sync to your cloud account, which is where we can collate all of that information, put it into usable and, and useful reports, and give that to you uh, as insights into your business. So we call that the web app, and I'll touch on that in, in a second. So ideally, the most you could ever lose is your records from the past few hours if you were out of uh, cell reception. So again, when we think about you know day-to-day -day usage, we wanted it to be very simple, very easy to use so that as Hugh says, as you're doing those tasks on the go, you can pull out your phone, do your record keeping, and this so that you, when you get back to the house at the end of a long day, you're not needing to type it into the computer. So for instance, if I've got those, those gray tag um, 28, uh, sheep in the bottom right hand corner and I wanted to do a simple field to field movement you know usually a record that wouldn't get uh, written down on Agareb I can simply press and hold with my finger drag that group into their new field drop them down 
And then from here, rather than just ticking the box to do your record keeping, we can actually hopefully allow you to input a little bit more information, or if I wanted to, I could click save and I'd be ready to go. I can always backdate that record. So I can backdate to yesterday, June 30th, set that down. And then as I said, you could click save, be off and running, know exactly where your sheep are, and then we're starting to, to uh, actually generate more and more information. But you can also, I don't know if anybody on the call is, is using a plate meter or doing grass measuring or, or wants to, to get into that side of things. But ultimately, what we would say is, well, geez, it doesn't look like there's, there's much um, available feed in that, in that field. So Agarab would think that there's zero grazing days left for that group. But what you can do is actually come in and say, well, I can actually see there's about nine centimeters of grass. And you get that immediate information supplied to you, again, really without doing a whole lot uh, more in terms of record keeping, we would estimate that you've got about seven days remaining from today to graze that field with those uh, that group of, of animals. I'll save that down. And as you can see, we've actually now completed a record on paddock 14 in the right-hand corner. We've had a stop grazing record. We've completed a start grazing record in, in field 39 there. And on that group of animals, we've also got that record of the movement from field to field. So again, maybe records that, that may not have been captured in the past, you can simply pull out your phone, complete those, and move on with your day. Really, when we, when we started to think about how best to, to do your record keeping, and, and one of the, the features that I know Hugh loves is the ability for you to run your groups of animals any which way you would want to. And what I mean by that is this group of, of 28 sheep, if I just tap in on that icon, I get a top level uh, look at, at what's going on in the fields, but then I can actually drill in and see that that's actually two groups, so I'm a group of 10, and a group of 18. And these are actually unidentified use. So if you're not using individual tags or you're not wanting to, to record um, electronically, you can actually still do your record keeping. So I know Hugh has all of his lambs in there because he doesn't tag those until they're leaving the farm. He's got those all in Agrib and he can come click view details and actually start to manage, get real insights into that group without needing or having it be mandatory that he assigns any real uh, tags to that particular group. So from here, across the top, he's got his, his summary of his animals. He's got a full history. So he can come down and see the last weight, when they were last moved. There's the last treatment on, on March 3rd. And any notes that he's applied. So in the top right hand corner, anybody can, can uh, enter a note. And the, hopefully the, the exciting part there is it's going to be date stamped with my name, what time I've done it, because you can have multiple users sharing this information, inputting information, so that you know really it doesn't come down to, to one person's responsibility to, to enter all that information. So ultimately, on a day-to-day on -day basis, I'd see down the bottom, left, bottom um, row of, of, the, of the app, you've got your common records, but I can tap more. And this is where I'd be able to do really anything I, I need to do for my, for my cattle, for my sheep, um, to this particular group of animals. So again, really, really simple, really easy to use. If I wanted to do really any of those records, it's as simple as coming in and saying, well, today we've actually given those treatment. This is now going to link into my live inventory. Let's say I was a little delinquent, done that on the 29th. Perfect. If I wanted to, I could come in and select multiple groups of animals. We'll keep it simple for today. And I'd come in and say, well, there we are. There's the treatment I'll be using this afternoon. I've already entered that into my inventory. And as I use it, it's just going to draw down assigning a cost and sorting my cross compliance needs in the background. So ultimately, I'd have that dosage preset, or I can come in and adjust it. Let's say I'm, I'm just giving two mils today. It's gonna give me that total amount applied. I can show those advanced fields, put in a reason, put in who applied it, labor costs, things of that nature. I'll save that down. And then you've automatically got that record that'll be a live history in the, 
in the history right there, June 29th. And as you'll also see, if we return to the map, there's that little red W. So it, to indicate that those animals are in withdrawal. So ultimately, everybody across the farm can understand exactly what's going on at an immediate uh, snapshot of, of that particular group. So plenty more on, on kind of the, the bulk animal group record keeping that, that I could go into, but uh, I certainly won't bore you with, with every single detail. Um, what I'd love to, to just flick over to next is, is I mentioned kind of cropping and, and pasture improvement and, and bringing all that information into one spot to get that full farm uh, view. So if you see across the top, you've got livestock, paddocks, and tasks. If I click on paddocks or fields, obviously I've just simplified my map. But what it's going to allow me to do is come down here, tap on each of these fields, Again, get a full history of what's gone on in that particular field, movements in, out, feeds, treatments, anything like that. And again, all of my records can be input right here from my phone and are immediately pushed up to my cloud account. So if I click on more, something as simple as putting in my feed on offer or you know, maybe a little bit more handy and, and more relevant. You know, Right now, if you're cutting silage, you can come in, cut the silage with that harvest, uh, application, store it in your inventory, and actually then feed it out as we get through summer. So you're actually starting to see exactly, okay, well, that field may be supporting more grazing days over a given year, but it actually cut far less uh, silage than, than the rest of, uh, of my fields, and ultimately didn't allow me to, to feed those animals throughout the winter as I, I know I need to. You've also got your spray and fertilizer, so I'll quickly a tap on fertilizer there. So I can do multiple fields all at one time if I wanted to. So one record, you know, as many fields as you like. Click next. And this is again, linking into that live inventory. So there's my 2010-10 that we'll use today. Batch number preloaded there for you. Application rate, total amount that's about to be applied, the withdrawal period, expiry date, everything that's needed uh, for yes across compliance. But again, I've put in a cost of what this, this total uh, five ton in piece of inventory cost me and each time I use it it's going to be breaking it down in a, in a cost of production for me. This is one uh, I know Hugh, uh, Hugh quite likes as he, he so rightly mentioned he, he doesn't want to be making up records anymore so what we can do is actually say it started today at nine but I finished at two right that's the time I did my fertilizer application I can get complicated and put in my boom setup if I wanted to but but no need Ultimately, if I click next, what we can do here is pull together all of that information that I need to be recording, but maybe uh, at times when we've asked in person isn't as diligently recorded as it could be. So I'll click, uh, apologize, auto populate conditions. And that's actually gonna pull down all of that information that you may uh, need. Now that's editable. If the temperature, you're not worried about the, the 0.3, you can round that off to 15. And same for humidity or wind speed, things of that nature. So again, saving you time, hopefully simplifying things in the moment, but then down the track. What we've got as well there is again, very visual, very easy to use. That field is now bright red, so you shouldn't need to do, uh, you shouldn't have any uh, stock grazing that field and everybody across the farm now knows that we probably shouldn't be having uh, stock graze that field. Just before I get to, to kind of the, the crux of the matter and, and the, the things that we've been really excited to, to be able to add on the individual side of things, so linking into your hardware, the EIDs, um, assessing those individual animals and doing the record keeping from, from that side. Last and not least, across the top, you've got your tasks. So I, what I can do is because it's multiple users, you can actually start to see the different initials. So I've got C, U, E, Y, K, B. These are all tasks that have been assigned to members of, of my particular team. And one feature that, that we, we've kind of recently added, but, but gets made um, kind of use of quite a bit in the bottom right hand corner, you'll actually see that bullseye. It's, it's your GPS location. So rather than say coming around, you know, this, this field number 14, I can tap on my GPS location, know exactly 
where I'm standing in that field, press and hold. And I could say maybe molehill. And then from there, what I can do is let's assign it to Annabelle. Annabelle needs to have that done by tomorrow. She'll be thrilled with me. It's a high priority. And I could write her a note if need be, but I'll save that down. There's Annabelle's new task that'll pop up on her side of things and, uh, and allow her to, to tick that off as, as we go. The other portion, again, is, as I mentioned, and what, what um, kind of completes that, that group management side of things is, is obviously the individual side. So we've spent a, quite a bit of, of both development time and, and money to integrate into kind of all of your major government databases. So if, if you've run in cattle, obviously a, a link into BCMS, link into EID Cymru, ARAMs, et cetera, et cetera. All those government databases that you have to be reporting animal movements into, you can do that right here from the app uh, on, on Agri. So ultimately from here, there's that ability to really get records in any way you like again. So not, not kind of demanding that you do it the way Agri does, really wanting to cater to the way that, that you run your, your animals. So if you are tagging uh, with, with electronic tags, great, you can actually use your live session. So I click to tap on live session, and this is gonna allow me to connect to my wayhead, connect to my stick reader, scan my animals through as they come. So whether that's a simple scan, so you're just creating those groups, you can simply do that, or whether that's doing things like treatments, weights, condition scores, things of that nature. The real kind of benefit that we've, we've tried to build in there is if I come to live session, come to templates, this is one that, that gets quite uh, a lot of use from our, our current customers and that I can come here and say, let's go with webinar templates and so no one gets uh, confused. And from there I can say, well, great. So ultimately what we're gonna do today, we'll start with a wait. We're then gonna go to a treatment. That's gonna link into my live inventory as it's doing there. Select my cattle injection, perfect. And then I can finish off with what we call a move. So this is again, how we've tried to incorporate the map into your day-to-day your -day usage. So if you are splitting a group of cattle based on weight, based on really anything age, you can actually then assign them to a live location on farm. So at any given point, if you're heading up to a particular, uh, either when, whether it's pen or shed or, or field across the farm, you can actually know exactly which individual animals are standing in that particular field without needing to scan them. And I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So I could go start live session. Let's do a wait. Perfect, I'd connect to my hardware, but let's off the back of that add a drafting option. And we'll say wait for our, our uh, default, they're gonna go to biggest, but I want that ability to actually add a draft option. Say I'm gonna draft them up for, draft them off for sale. I can certainly do that here. So I'd go start session, connect to my hardware, or I can select my animals manually. There's my Aberdeen Angus. And from there, I'm actually getting a weight. That would be automatic uh, if you're using your hardware. And ultimately that is a very sick cow losing 28 kilos a day. But ultimately it's then gonna allow me to say, well, that one's very sick, so I need to put it into beside RAM because I'm gonna treat them a little differently. I'd go save and next, move on to the next, um, move on to the next animal, and ultimately really allow me to, to get those groups of individuals into live locations across my farm to be able to then allocate, um, simply allocate uh, records that way, simply allocate movements, things of that nature to, to really get a handle of everything across the farm. So again, that ability to get those records in on a live session, fantastic. You can also use a bulk record, simply cattle, pick from a number of those different records, select the animals that I'm wanting to treat, and then move on to my next uh, record. And again, remember, this is all from your app, and then all immediately collated into usable and useful reports. Last and, and certainly not least, tap on my individual animals, filter for really anything I want, 
tap on that animal that I'm looking for, and I see that full cow card. Condition score, weight, if there are no meat withholding period, et cetera, et cetera. There's that 28 kilo loss that we made in the last couple of days. And ultimately from there, I can either check the full history like I could do with my groups, or I can create a record manually right here from my app. Got a, a, just a few minutes left. And the, the one other thing I mentioned was the web app portion of Agreb. And so ultimately, as I've mentioned, the, all of your day-to-day -day records go in easily, simply into uh, the, the app, allow you to do that on the go. And then the beauty, and I think the, the, the real value of, of a cloud-based system and, and of Agreb is that if all of your information is going into one spot, you can actually have that all flow through into one live location, being that here on your web app. So you've got four or five people across the farm, or there's two of you, all of that information is pulled together and collated into useful reports. So simple things like your insights, looking at, okay, well, I may not be the most diligent uh, you know, uh, grass uh, measurer, but what I can do by moving my, those icons around the farm is to ultimately say, well, let's actually take a look, closer look at this. Let's go just look at the fields. And I can say, well, the deep green have been empty for 120 days or longer in the last six months. So why is this block up here being undergrazed and these down here being overgrazed? Is that on purpose or is that something that I may want to, to actually address? So again, those insights that are just immediately available for you, I haven't had to do any uh, data in inputting. That's all just immediately there and waiting for me again. Snapshot views probably supports that case. We may be overgrazing those two particular fields. We've been, you've got, you know, really anything you'd need from a cross compliance standpoint, any way you'd want to do your records. You don't have to do them on the app. I could simply come here to my laptop, be able to come and customize any column, any look at any information that I might want to see. So whether let's look at my EIDs, can look at uh, the date weight and the daily live weight gain. And then say, okay, well, I'd like to see species probably a little not unrelevant. Let's go age class. So there's my two bulls across the farm. There's all their latest information. Last observed weight, fantastic. The last time we, we weighed them, the live location. So they're both in beside RAM, that's good. And ultimately, if I needed a little bit more information, I can click into that animal, do my records right here from my computer, however you're comfortable with doing so. Last and, and certainly not least, there's so many more tools in here that, that, that can be of use, but I think the real value comes from the reports. So again, whether that's at a group level and you're looking at a full livestock cost production, a gross margin, uh, or a, just a simple reconciliation, what you'll start to see is that all of this is, is immediately available. So it's immediately there waiting for you to, to make use of it. One I actually I quite like, paddock grazing intensity. So you can start to look at in a given time period, so let's be more specific, let's say last month, which of my fields did I overgraze, undergraze, or which are actually delivering? And we can see our pens are of course being pulled into that. But ultimately here, what we can see is Paddock 53 is actually producing about 50%, almost 50% more than any given field across the, the farm. So ultimately, is that something that I want to be looking into? But again, anything that you'd want to see, birth records, death records, full treatment history, and really hopefully one that, that'll keep everybody out of trouble is the flock book and herd book. So being able to come in and see any sales, purchases, births, deaths, anything you'd need to see in that given time range, you can have that readily available for anybody that, that needs to, to be able to see that. So again, any information that you're able to put into Agrib, we want to be able to give back to you in useful format. And we're actually working on some pretty incredible weight uh, insight tools that will actually allow you to project uh, your your daily live weight gain, your current weights, and then split those by certain elements like a sire or a, a dam type or, or maybe what they've been fed, if they've been treated, to really see why you've got some performing very well and some maybe 
lagging behind so you can make those, those decisions moving forward. So again, hopefully what we've tried to do, and we know I think why we've, we've uh, got over 250 uh, users, it's about 450 farms here in the U UK using Agreb uh, and more than 5,000 across the globe using Agreb to, to make better decisions, to kind of see a, a better insight into their farm and ultimately help them, whether it's save time, improve their record keeping, or try and uh, uh, make a little bit more on, on the bottom line, it's certainly one that, uh, that, that we've tried to build to, to help all of our, our customers. I will pause there, and, and I'm only three minutes over, uh, so which is, which is uh, great. Um, I'll, I'll check just the, the questions here. There's been a few questions that have come in, which is, which is fantastic, and I'll, I'll certainly get to those, and I can do any kind of live demos that, that you may want to see. I've got uh, I've got all night, uh, much to the, the chagrin of my my wife, who's been relegated to to the uh, the other room. But um, we'll start uh, here. Uh, Michael, does the app integrate with EID? I, I said I'd I'd answer that one. It absolutely does. So if you're if you're putting in those individuals, assigning EID tags to those individual animals, and then uh, using your hardware to integrate directly into Agreb, hopefully gone are those days of downloading a CSV, trying to import it, or you know, losing a bit of, bit of data from, from the wayhead, it all gets immediately saved onto, onto your smartphone or, or tablet. What happens if you lose your phone? Again, great question. The app works completely offline, um, but as soon as you find that, that connection, all of your information is immediately saved onto your, your cloud account. So again, hopefully the the most data that, that you'd actually lose would be of, of a couple hours uh, at the most. Uh, Matt, can you enter information for one holding on multiple devices, two people, uh, smartphones? Yep, absolutely. So we have uh, customers that, that have, I think our largest is about 18 users entering data into a, a single account. What I would say and what I probably didn't mention on that front is you can actually have multiple farms so if I had demo farm and my second farm or my, my pathway, what that would allow me to do is have different BCMS or EID Cymru connections, running them under the same uh, organization with Agri in Agrib, again, keeping them all in, in one spot. Uh, Michael, can the app draw weather data from a third party weather setup, a weather link, for example? So at the minute, uh, the, the weather that I showed is just from your, your local uh, nearest weather station. And so I think the, the handy part there is it's actually drawing from the closest station to that field, not necessarily where you're standing. At the minute, there's no custom integration, um, but we are actually working on a number of, of kind of custom integrations that will allow you to um, draw information directly into Agrib, so your, your accounting packages in Figured. Uh, we've got a, a public connection. So again, we're working with a number of, of different um, other, other uh, programs in, in the, the ag space so that we can continue to, to really pull all that information in. Because what we want to do and what we're working on currently is being able to import that information and you can imagine, you know, not needing to walk your fields and knowing what the, the feed on offer, the, the available feed was, or, you know, looking at different IoT sensors across the fields or, or on the animals and pulling that information into, into Agrib. So that's definitely something that we're working on currently. Uh, Caroline, I was wondering how much training do you find users need to use the app to its fullest? How's that delivered? and what sort of continued support is offered uh, in terms of tech support. So it's an amazing uh, question, Caroline. It looks like Caroline is a TFA advisor, so that's even better to see. Perfect question. Um, so we have, we actually call it, and this is gonna sound cheesy, but we actually call it our success team, Caroline. So we've got a success team. Uh, there's a, a number of people here in the UK as well as in Australia. So effectively, you've got 24 hour support. Um, but what we do is when someone joins on to Agareb, they have uh, an onboarding session, so a session with one of our team members that allows them to get fully set up, um, enables them to, to really understand how they best want to, to use Agareb. And what we find is that that really, really helps get them off on the right foot 
what I would say is when you say um, to, to use the app to its fullest, I would, and hopefully this doesn't come as a surprise, but there's so many things that we can do within in the software that I'm not sure a single person uses the entire thing. But what we always stress is don't try and use everything. Use, again, coming back to, to that challenge, what's that problem that you want to solve? Use those records. Um, so we offer uh, every two weeks, we've got uh, a live webinar just like this one where we'll go with new features and functions and, and do a training session. And you've always got uh, the ability to, to ring us up and you'll, you'll probably get Beth. Uh, she's actually off a, a farm in the Midlands herself. Parents are, are dairy farmers. Uh, so she's, she's up there right now. Uh, so you'd get to speak with, with Beth if, it, if you rung us up tomorrow. And if you rung now, you'd probably get uh, one of our staff in, in Australia. Um, or again, you can always come down to this help section, schedule a call, go to the help center or chat live with the team. So we're, we're there to, to make sure you get the most out of, out of Agarib. Couple other questions and, and please keep them coming. Um, so please, you know, keep those coming. I can, I can uh, hopefully answer any and all of them. Um, from, uh, from James, I'm on a mixed farm in West Sussex, fantastic. These programs tend to be specialized on one branch of farming. Couldn't agree more. We are fully integrated. Will Agrib integrate with other programs, especially for setup? On the Arable, I use Muddy Boots. Great. Okay, fantastic. I think the ultimately the um, the the answer is yes, James. I mean, I, I think there's there's obviously work involved in in integrating in between the number of of different um number of different software systems but i think the one that that you've said is you know if money boots or you know we work with a company in a, in uh in a, in a couple of other different markets named um uh agri data now I apologize can't remember what they're called doesn't matter uh that do a very specialized cropping uh uh, program. And so what we'll do is, is we actually employ uh, 18 full-time, very expensive software developers uh, to work on the app every single day. And so while it's great, we can, we can pull together all of these records and reports. What we'd really want to do is do exactly as you've outlined is if you're going to be putting information into say muddy boots or a specialized cropping uh, package, we want to be able to pull that in and bring it in and again, give you that whole farm view. Uh, I, I won't sit here and tell you that, that it's gonna be tomorrow, but it, it, we, are, we are certainly not waiting uh, for, for that to, to come knocking on our door. We've, we've got a, a full, like I said, a full team that, that get up every day and, and build new features and functions and things like that. And again, you can come and, and start to see those on, on the integrations tab. Uh, and just to James, you've got Will Agrib lift uh, data maps from other um, programs. Yes, absolutely. If you have your own maps, you can absolutely come here and add your uh, paddocks. So I could easily draw those in on my own farm, but I can also come in and add those and we can import those, those maps for you. So whichever way you're, you're trying to get those in, it should be rather easy to, to do so. So thank you. Uh, Andrew, which stick readers work with Agarab? Uh, perfect uh, segue, Andrew. If you come to the Help Center, so which I've just done, if you're ever in the Agarab app or, or anything like that, you can come to the Help Center. You'd be able to come in here, search for a stick reader or anything you'd be looking for. I, I won't uh, pull it up here. I'll, I'll certainly will send that across, but help.agarab.com, and I could search for for anything I would I would want to. Let's say hardware. And there we go, supported hardware devices, hardware connections, how you actually get those connected. And we're updating these every single day. So again, depends on which, which phone you've got, but again, we wanna be there and, and make sure that you are successful. Because if you're not loving your usage, tough for us to, to continue, um, to, continue to, to, to feel good about ourselves ultimately. Um, uh, Gerald, is there a light version for small holders? Yeah, ab absolutely, Gerald. And it's probably one I, I, I should have touched on and I apologize, it's a great question. We have what's called our essentials platform. Um, so it, it's everything that I would have showed you today without some of the fancier bells and whistles. So you're without some of those advanced reports, but you can still do all of your record keeping on the app. You can still do 
uh, you know, your, your fields, your grass calculations, really anything that you'd want to do on the livestock side of things, and you'll still get those core reports. So really enabling you to, to take that first step, get all your records into one spot. And if you find that down the track, you do want to, um, you do want to, to kind of see some of those reports, they'll be ready and waiting for you. Uh, Gerald, do you know of any other UK-based product which provides similar functionality? Great question. If so, what is Agrib's advantage? It's a, it's a great question. Uh, so thank you. Um, wh what I would say is, uh, and now I, I don't know each and every single um, uh, program that, that's available out there, Gerald, but I think what I would say is from a, a holistic farm management, I, I don't know uh, any that are doing kind of all, all the sheep, the cattle, the inventory, pasture, task management. There are definitely some great products out there that do something very specific. So again, if, if you've only got this one question that, that you want to, to, to get answered, you know, there may be a better product out there for you. But again, hopefully what we've done is, is been able to keep the, the app incredibly easy, incredibly simple to use while kind of you know, bringing everything into one spot um, and then allowing you to, to really see those, those full uh, insights into, into your farm. Uh, Alex Dunn, can you set up different permissions for different staff members so they access some of the product but not all features? Yes, absolutely. So we, you can set up a, a farmhand, farm manager, um, full admin access, and it depends on you know which sections you'd like them to, to be able to see. And what I would say is we've actually also got what we call advisor access. So what you could do is allow your accountant or agronomist, or uh, we've even had people who've got uh, the ability to just look at your, your inventory. So if you've got that trusted partner, enabling them to see the information that you've got um, on the AgriWeb system and allowing them to, to really help without bothering you uh, on a day-by-day on a -day basis. So, so yes, absolutely. Uh, Michael Price, perfect. Didn't think it would take so long. So Price is a monthly or yearly subscription. Uh, so we do not sell your data. We do not sell your information. We do not share any of that information. Uh, ultimately, we uh, charge that subscription on a monthly or yearly basis so that we can focus on, on building you the best product we possibly can. And we've got plans that start at 21 pounds a month, so 250 pounds for the year. So again, hopefully what we can do is allow you to bring all of that information into one spot, not need to pay for a number of different systems. And so hopefully that, that enables that, you know, 250 pounds for the year, get you up and running, get those records in and really start to, to make use of it as, as I said, as, as many of our, our customers across the UK do. At the minute, that was a fantastic flurry of, of questions. So thank you guys very, very much. Um, at the minute, there there aren't um, any other questions that that I can can see. I will kind of hang on here for for just a second, but maybe we'll um, if we've if we've still got uh, Hugh and and George, we'll bring them back for just a second. Just a, a thank you guys for for one hosting us from the TFA. We're we're thrilled to be a, a partner. And what I probably should have mentioned is that you do have, if you are a TFA member, you do have a, an additional month free. So uh, you do, you know, if you sign up to, to that, you know, 250 pounds a, a year plan, that does come down to, to 220 or 225. Um, so you can certainly make, make use of that. And, uh, and there is that free setup session because you're a TFA member that comes with your uh, your AgriWeb subscription. So if you are a TFA member, we're thrilled again to, to be a part of, of, the, of the organization and, and being a partner. So we do have that offer of, of a, an additional free month for you guys and, uh, and the ability to, to jump on and, and get that free extended uh, training session when, when you do get up and running. So again, thank you guys so, so much. Um, I, I know we've got uh, uh, George and, and Hugh there, so maybe I'll stop sharing my screen for just a second. There they are. Um, so yeah, any, any last kind of comments, gentlemen, or thank you again, George, for having us. 
No, pleasure. Thank you, Campbell. You've run through that really well. And I hope that uh, those on the webinar have got a lot out of it. And uh, let's hope that they uh, begin to see the benefit of getting, giving you some custom. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. And same here, Campbell. Thanks for allowing me to be part of it and to showcase a little bit about the Dollar Coffee estate. And really, you know, it's, it's, I, I'd, I'd encourage anybody to uh, try out AgriWeb, at least go on a trial or to go further and buy it. It, it just makes life so much easier. Uh, and I think that's so important these days. It allows you to get on with farming, which we all love to do. Uh, and, um, you know, gives you valuable insights, uh, which we will all need going into a very uncertain future. So thank you again, Campbell. Perfect. No, it's, uh, it's well said. So again, thank you to, to everybody for, for taking the time. We will absolutely follow up. Uh, as you said, there's a 14-day free trial available, agrareb.co.uk, if you wanted to check it out this evening, or we'll certainly send a, a follow-up email in, in the next day or so. Um, and I know we'll be sending along some information, more information about the TFA for those of you that, uh, that can take advantage of, of that spectacular membership. Um, so again, thank you guys very much. We'll look forward to uh, hopefully speaking with plenty of you soon. Thank you again, George. Thank you, Hugh. We'll uh, look forward to speaking to everybody again soon.